Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. An overnight shooting ends with one man in the hospital and the small. Excuse me. This morning, police are asking a lot of questions. We're going to have all the details. Plus, the FDA expected to approve COVID booster shots from Pfizer and Moderna. And Go ahead. No. <laughs> Taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 52 degrees. It is chilly out there, and we like this cold weather. Ooh, well, well I do. Morning. It is Friday, November 19th. I was trying to throw down pretzels before the show. Is that what Clearly that was? not working out, yeah. I thought it was a cop drop. Mm, no, they're, uh, they're yogurt-covered pretzels, too. Oh, oh yeah, actually. Yes. Oh, right that here. looks pretty good. Yeah. Well, I prefer the chocolate. It's delicious. Chocolate the director's covered. like, told you not to eat that. <laughs> They're right. I'm okay. always right. It's fine. Well, we have a commercial break. We can uh, eat during then. Either way, 52 degrees. A little yeah. chilly to start the morning, yeah. start the Friday. Mike Osterhage is joining us live. Mike was so gracious. He saw me choking. He was like, do you need water? I was like, no, Aww. I'm just going to sit here and die. Okay. <laughs> but you know, every once in a while, and then sometimes you get that little tickle in your throat and there's it won't nothing go you can away. do about it. Yes. Anyway, uh, it is chilly out there, but not as cold as what we were expecting because those clouds decided to slide on in here and it acts like a blanket. And so that has been not only keeping temperatures up, but in many situations, in many areas, that's blocking out the lunar eclipse, which is now just about uh, over. But you can see this darker shade of gray right here and these low clouds that decided to hang on in in here. You know, we talked about that yesterday. There was the chance for some clouds and some folks did get to see. We've got a couple of pictures of the, the lunar eclipse going to show you throughout the course of the morning. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, it just wasn't uh, what we had hoped for. So 52 here in town, Randolph 57 Stinson and got some 40s in the hill country. Now further on north and northeast where there is a little bit of clearing and if skies happen to clear on out, temperatures will drop down. But I'm thinking that we're going to keep these clouds around here. We do have very, very dry air in place. So we've got two of the three ingredients. We've got dry air and light wind, but again, clouds act like a blanket. As far as the allergens, mold is moderate. Juniper is on the low side and going for, well, just to maybe drop in a couple of degrees, keeping some clouds around. Still chilly, still grab a jacket. And, you know, yesterday afternoon, we got up into the mid-60s and there was plenty of sunshine. So really didn't need a jacket in the late afternoon hours. Same thing today, up to 67 degrees. But if you're heading out then this evening, yes, definitely take one. It's going to be very cold tomorrow. We've got definitely an up and down forecast, plus a first look at what to expect on Thanksgiving. That's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Max. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, San Antonio police are searching for a missing 13-year-old. This is Bella Martinez. She's 5'4 with black hair and brown eyes. She was last seen wearing a black shirt with wrapper ice cube on it. So and also black ripped jeans and a black Crocs. They believe she may be with this person, 17 year old Ariel Moreno. Police are looking for him as well in connection to Martinez's abduction. Moreno was seen driving a gold Chevy Impala with a dent off the passenger door. If you know where police can find either of these teens, you are asked to call the police department. And new this morning, an argument ends with one man shot, but right now police not exactly getting a lot of information from that victim. Right now, what police know is that a man was arguing with someone in an alley near Rigsby Avenue and I-10 around midnight. That's when he was shot in the leg. The man taken to uh, Bamsey to be treated. He is expected to be okay. The man wouldn't tell officers much more than that. He wouldn't even give them the, man, the name of the person who he was arguing with. The embattled president and CEO of the Children's Shelter, Annette Rodriguez, will resign. Confirmation of Rodriguez's departure came hours after multiple sources said they were informed she was stepping down. Rodriguez's exit caps off a hectic year for the shelter, which was forced to close one of its facilities after repeated state violations. Back in May, the shelter canceled its contract with Child Protective Services to provide community-based care in our area. The move sent the Bear County foster care system into a further tailspin. Rodriguez had led the nonprofit for the past decade. Rodriguez's resignation date has been slated for February 17th. In your morning headlines, the jury at Kyle Rittenhouse's murder trial set to return today for the fourth day of deliberations. Yesterday's court session was notable largely for the judge banning MSNBC from the courthouse after a freelancer was accused of following the jurors into their bus. Now, as jurors deliberate, the two mistrial requests from the defense are now hanging over the case. Last week, the defense asked for a mistrial after saying the prosecutor asked improper questions. A second mistrial motion was sparked by a jury request Wednesday to rewatch video in the case. The judge has not yet ruled on these two requests. 
And turning to the pandemic, a new report this morning on the origins of COVID-19. A new study finds the first known case of COVID was in a vendor at a wet market in China. The scientists behind the study analyzed public records to make this conclusion. Meanwhile, as ABC's Ike Jachi reports, here in the United States, today is a crucial day in the fight against COVID. This morning, millions of Americans are one step closer to getting an extra boost of protection against COVID. The CDC today is expected to sign off on boosters for all adults after getting the green light from the FDA. I think as soon as possible, especially around the holidays, that's what motivated me and most of my family. The growing demand for increased immunity comes days before the big holiday travel rush. And with COVID infections rising more than 35% nationwide in the last three weeks. And now, new research shows symptoms for so-called long haulers may stick around for life. A new study finds more than 1 million Americans who suffered with COVID may have permanently lost their sense of smell. In the meantime, a remarkable COVID survival story in Maine. I love you. Bettina Lerman, who was unvaccinated, ended up in a coma for more than a month. Her family was planning her funeral and even sold her belongings. But then, on the day they planned to take her off life support, her doctor called with surprising news. I need you to come up to the hospital right away. I'm like, what? Is something wrong? And he goes, well, your mother just woke up. I literally dropped the phone. I was like, what? <laughs> I mean, because we were supposed to be terminating life support that day. Ike Jachi, ABC News, New York. And NASA astronaut Jessica Watkins is set to become the first black woman on the International Space Station crew. She is expected to launch into space in April on the SpaceX Crew 4 mission. The crew will spend six months in the ISS microgravity laboratory conducting scientific research. Watkins has been preparing for her first space mission since being selected as an astronaut candidate back in 2017. She earned her bachelor's degree in geological and environmental sciences at Stanford, then went on to earn a doctorate in geology from U. UCLA. All right, time now, 437, 52 degrees out. And if you're going to be doing a lot of cooking next week for Thanksgiving, you're going to want to make sure you have a good knife. Still ahead on GMSA, which knives tested the best in the kitchen? And go Spurs, go. Wasn't exactly a top tier night for the silver and black. We have the highlights from the Minnesota game coming up right after the break. And taking a look outside with a live cam, if you're a fan of the cold weather, well, it's a good morning. We're at 52 degrees. We'll be right back. Welcome back and go Spurs go. The silver and black could not get a handle on the Timberwolves last night, despite Jakob Podol back in the lineup for the silver and black. Remember, he missed seven games because of the league's health and safety protocol. So. Let's take a look at the highlights. Spurs down by 11 and a half. Third quarter to DeJounte to Kelton Johnson. Corner three, the lead down to nine. Dem Vassell, the lone bright start for the Spurs last night. Pull up from the wing, then he gets a steal, takes it back, two-hand dunk. He actually led the Spurs in points, 18 points, but the Spurs still trailed by 15 in the fourth. Kelton Johnson finished with a dozen, so did Con uh, Lonnie Walker, but the Spurs could not even reach triple digits. They fall 115. And 90. Like I just told my teammates, we talked on the plane, the buses, the locker room, outside of our job. And when we get on the floor, it's like everybody's scared to talk to each other. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's, it's a lot of fixable things. Uh, and this is going to start with us. All right, don't worry, it's a long season. One loss, one loss, 82 games. Next up, they are hosting the Phoenix Suns here at home, ATT Center, Monday at 7 30. All right, can't talk sports without high school football. Second round of the high school football playoffs. Getting started last night, Southwest Legacy Titans facing the Gregory Portland Wildcats. Second round of the playoffs. Wildcats bite first. Titans six yard whoo, play action. Fools the defense. Quarterback rolling out. Find a man wide open in the flat. Jogging in the end zone. You like to jog to cross the plane. 7 0 Wildcats. Not done. Next possession, same duo again. This time, hot route. Wildcats racing 15 yards out. 14 0 Gregory Portland. Wildcats continue to dominate the game. Look at this, finishing 55 to 13. And taking a quick look at the other scores from in and around our community. Two more games, Pleasanton getting the win over a Beeville Jones, 21-20, a little barn burner over there. Flower buff, ooh, dominating Eagle Pass win, 47-7. A lot more football tonight. We're gonna have the highlights on the night beat, and of course, the BGC app. Get the updates while you're on the go. Another busy Friday night. Always.
Time now, 442, 51 degrees now. And coming up next, as you get ready to cook your Thanksgiving meal, if you're in need of a good knife, we can help. We'll have a look at some of the best knives that will give you a perfect cut. And welcome back, it's 445. ABC News got an exclusive look inside the NSA's highly secretive department that is battling ransomware threats. ABC's Pierre Thomas has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. You're looking at one of the most sensitive and secretive rooms on the planet. This is military, civilian, contractor, this is Department of Defense, this is intelligence community. Uh, they're all resident here uh, and working side by side. The NSA Integrated Cyber Center. ABC News is the first network ever allowed to bring cameras inside. General Paul Nakasone oversees the world's most powerful electronic spy agency. This room is the nerve center of the NSA and U.S. Cyber Command. Agency supercharged with the world's most advanced spyware and most creative hackers to peer overseas and to virtually anything that has wires. In cyberspace, the advantage goes to those that have speed and agility. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more of our exclusive look inside the NSA. With your GMA First Look, I'm Pierre Thomas, ABC News. Well, with the holidays coming up right around the corner, something that will help in the kitchen is a good knife. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz shows us which ones tested the best. When you're taking meat, veggies, and herbs from fridge to feast, there's one tool a cook can't do without. A good chef's knife can make chopping, slicing, and dicing a lot easier. Prices range a lot, so how do you pick? Consumer Reports tested 8-inch chef knives from Henkel's, Vustoff, Mac, KitchenAid, Global, Xylus, Kemake, and Mercer. First check, ergonomics. So a knife with a well-designed handle allows the user to do more work, become less tired in the course of doing that work, and decreases the likelihood of accidents. Next, CR's Paul Hope, who's also a trained chef, actually used the knives in his home kitchen. The hardest things you can do in a kitchen is to work with raw chicken. So I used each knife for that and to prep a variety of veggies. Which ones cut it best? Testers say this Henkel's Premio 8-inch chef's knife seems to fit every hand, and the contoured handle is comfortable to grip. And the weight of the blade feels just right, about $40. For the best classic design, the heftier Wustoff Classic 8-inch has a traditional design. The blade is a single piece of steel that runs from tip to handle, $150. Their best budget pick? This KitchenAid Classic Forged 8-inch Triple Rivet Chef Knife. Although it's not made of carbon and steel, the blade cuts easily and only $20. Good knives are an investment, so you want to take care of them. First of all, don't store them loose in a drawer and don't put them in the dishwasher. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, you were saying that you need a new uh, set of knives. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if they've always been bad mm -hmm. or, <laughs> or if it developed over the years. I, I just don't remember, but I just know that we're having a hard time. Uh, my my husband does every once okay. in a while, but I mean I think we're beyond that. Well, Mike was like had like an analytical breakdown of the knives during the package. He's like, oh yeah, when they come on uh, SA Live, SA Live, yeah, Live they, they have those really nice knives. It's yeah, like, mm, yeah, makes a difference. <laughs> it, it it really does. So just be careful. And, and the sharper the knife, the easier it is to use, and the less dangerous it is too. That's so true. Because the dull knife, you really got to. Mm. I was kind of taking notes during Marilyn's package. I was like, oh, that's a great idea. There you go. All right, uh, yeah, the moon was uh, very nice as it was rising, but you saw some of those clouds in this picture, and we had a, have a lot of clouds. The eclipse is over. Some folks did get to see it, and we've got some pictures that are going to be uh, showing throughout the course of the morning, but that cloud cover decided to slide on in here, and that is what has helped uh, temperatures stay up as well. So, uh, yeah, you can't really see it too well in this view, and also we're pointing this off to the west. Hopefully we get to see the moon uh, setting as it a uh, little bit later on this morning, but the cloud cover has kept temperatures about 10 degrees above what we were forecasting for this morning. We we're going for the uh, mid to lower 40s. Still got some mid 40s in portions of the hill country and uh, further up to the north down in the 30s. And there is a little bit more clearing, especially up to the north and to the northeast. We've got dry enough air to really get 
cold this morning with these dew points down in the 20s. We don't have much of a breeze out there. So again, like I was saying off the top of the show, two of the three ingredients you really need. You got to have those clear skies. So we've got that blanket on top of us as of right now. So it's going to stay really, really dry all day long. Once these low clouds get out of here, we're going to have plenty of sunshine today. We get up into the uh, upper 60s, mid to upper 60s. So just about a little bit shy of the uh, normal high. And uh, tomorrow we're going to start off nice and chilly as well. But notice how the uh, the wind starts to shift around. It's going to be out of the east today and then southeast tomorrow and by the afternoon dew points are really going to start to come back up here. So you're going to notice the humidity by late tomorrow afternoon and then a lot more humidity comes on in here on Sunday. And so that's going to lead to probably a little bit of fog, maybe some mist on Sunday morning as that moisture really starts to return. Then late probably about mid to late afternoon on Sunday as of right now. And the next front's going to come through here, knock the humidity out of the picture, and it's going to be kind of the same pattern. We get these these three, four day sequences where we start off kind of chilly, clear skies, humidity comes back in here, and that's going to be the same situation going into next week. First of all, here's the cloud cover, that uh, little darker shade of gray right there. Big, big system off to the northwest of us. That's going to sweep by up to the north, but it is going to pull a front through here. That's the front that comes through on Sunday. Then then we've got a big low which is going to be developing and it's one of those kind of those stubborn lows. We call it a cutoff low. It's going to be cut off and that's going to be working its way in here by the latter half of next week and that's what's going to bring some rain chances with it by Thanksgiving. First of all, 62 at noon today, partly cloudy skies and a lot of sunshine. Good looking day today, 67 for a high temperature, mostly sunny skies. If you are heading out tonight, I know there are a few playoff games for some of the teams around here. Do take a jacket. It will be chilly uh, tomorrow. Nice start, more humid throughout the afternoon and overnight into Sunday. A couple of showers on Sunday. Then we have the next front moving on through here. Clear Monday and we go through the same process again. Humidity is going to build back in clouds rain on Thursday on Thanksgiving as it's looking right now and maybe even lingering into Friday too. Okay, so just kind of maybe stay inside kind of Thanksgiving. Yes. Maybe unless you're prepared. If you, if you want a moist turkey, put it outside. <laughs> That'd just be a wet turkey. That'll be different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Time now, 452, 51 degrees out. And coming up next, directing Ghostbusters is becoming a family business, plus the American Music Awards happening tonight. Details in your entertainment news coming up after the break. Hi, welcome back. It's about 4.55 now. We're having some technical difficulties. That's right. So we're going to have the entertainment news later in the show. But don't worry, we have so much more to talk about. So time now, 4.55, 51 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA, including a look at how the economy along the border is being impacted now that it's open to non-essential travelers. And neighbors in one spot on the east side concerned about a recent spike in crime. What they believe is drawing the negativity We'll explain coming up. And the Salvation Army's annual Red Kettle campaign officially kicks off today, but they're asking for some help this year. We're going to have those details for you on GMSA at 6. And before we head to break, a quick live look out of the roadways. Pretty calm and quiet out there now, but don't worry. Stephen Cavazos is in the building. He's going to be joining us in just a bit, breaking down what you need to know before you head out the door. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. One particular area on the east side causing concerns for local families why they say one building needs to be shut down to keep their neighborhood safe. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are starting your day at 51 degrees, a little chilly out there, and looks like it's going to be cold pretty much all day. All right, good morning. It is Friday, November 19th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. So are you a fan of the cold weather to start the day? Yeah, why not? Happy Friday, by the way. I, I think so. I mean, I guess after so long of not wearing the jacket, mm -hmm. it was nice to dust it off and oh, put yeah. it to use. Mike yeah. Osterhage, it is perfect sweater weather out there. Yeah, it is. And you can probably keep one on throughout the rest of the afternoon. Although, think about yesterday, we got up into the mid-60s, and it was, you know, that sunshine out there, it was definitely warm. You didn't need a jacket, but do definitely keep one handy because it's really going to cool off then later on tonight. So this morning, we are at 50 right now. Look at the bottom number is very, very low. The dew point's down to 29, hardly any wind, but we had those clouds move on in here, and so that's why it's not as cold as what, uh, what we had expected. And 
and that in some places or a lot of places blocked out that uh, that lunar eclipse 65 for a high temperature uh, later on this afternoon. And as far as the aquifer, we are going to be making it uh, or excuse me, the aquifer dropped down one tenth of a foot in the past 24 hours. Mold is moderate and juniper is low now. Not everybody had cloudy skies, so a lot of folks did see the lunar eclipse, and there it is. The eclipse is over right now. It was at its peak uh, just a couple of hours ago, and of course, the lunar eclipse can only take place during the full moon phase, and this from uh, Old Farmer's Almanac and Native American Indian lore is the full beaver moon, and that's when the, the beavers would go into their lodges and get ready for the, the winter. But this is because the Earth is between the sun and the moon, and this is the Earth's shadow that causes that lunar eclipse. So very neat, a nice little celestial phenomena. Mostly cloudy skies this morning. It is chilly out there, and uh, like I said, temperatures though aren't as cold as what we had expected because of that blanket of clouds on top of us. Mostly sunny, very nice. Later on today, we're going to make it in the mid and upper 60s. Cold start tomorrow. Very, very chilly. We're going to have some clear skies tonight. Then the humidity is going to come back in here fairly quickly throughout the afternoon tomorrow, and we'll have a couple of showers possible on Sunday after some mist in the morning, maybe a couple of showers with that front uh, later on in the afternoon. Not a great chance of rain. Then next week, We'll go through the same pattern. It's going to start off kind of cool, then get milder, more humidity, and pretty good rain chances Thanksgiving and maybe even lingering into Friday of next week. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. Happy Friday. Is it a happy Friday on the roads? It's been. It's a TGIF, Mike. And I did make tomato basil soup yesterday. Uh, right now, the roads are looking pretty cool. And, uh, you know, let's go ahead and take a quick look here at Transguide, see how things are shaping up. 281 at Hildebrand. We have some pretty light traffic throughout the morning. And obviously, this is what we expect as we're getting a new day started. Let's take a quick look around town. 281 at Grayson. Few folks getting their morning started early with us, getting ready to travel off into the weekend. Maybe a perfect time to listen to Adele's new album. Let's go ahead and bring you to the map. We do have a stall that popped up. Up here a little while ago, but looks like it cleared out off I 35 South at Powell Street. It was causing some lanes to be blocked out there, but nothing too concerning. And as we look at, at a wider look at the map, it is pretty much green on the screen. What a great way to start this Friday. As we take a look at those inbound times, the same thing here. It's green across the board. 24 minutes coming in from Bernie and I 10, 25 from 281 and Bulverde, and 26 coming in from 35. Now there's still some construction crews linger, lingering around 35. We'll take a look at that and other construction spots you can expect. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Top stories we're following this morning an east side shooting shedding light on a troublesome intersection. People who live off of Drexel Avenue and Hackberry say one spots after hour parties are leading to shootings, fights and other disturbances. So people who live in the area say the building that used to be Twin Sisters Cantina has since been turned into an after hours hangout spot, bringing nothing but bad news to their street. According to police records since June 18th, they have been called to that building's location 73 times, 21 of which were shootings. The most recent shooting was 3.30 a.m. yesterday where a 36-year-old man was shot in the legs. It sounded like it was right there by my window. I mean, it was loud. Bow, 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 bow. I said, God. There was a house whose front window has been shot out. Is somebody in my family going to be shot by these random shootings? Police have not made an arrest in yesterday's shooting. They did say they are working with those at the establishment to work on the issues they are having. We also reached out to the property owner at that location, but we have not heard back. Lots of talk about the southern U.S. border now that the U.S. is allowing non-essential travelers in. Stephanie Jimenez was in Laredo. She shows us how the opening of the border is now impacting our local economy. The U.S.-Mexico border opened to non-essential travelers 11 days ago, and we are seeing an impact already, but the type of impact depends on where you are along the border. Our colleague Alicia Barrera was in Eagle Pass, where she reported on Operation Steel Curtain, where Governor Greg Abbott put shipping containers along the border there to plug the gaps in the wall to make sure that undocumented immigrants don't come through. So obviously in Eagle Pass, the concern more has to do with border security issues. Here in Laredo, where we are right now, the concern really has to do with the economy. A lot of these stores here in Laredo, just a stone's throw away from the border, have taken a really hard 
hit in the last 21 months when this border was closed to non-essential travel. We've seen a lot of boarded up businesses and a lot of the businesses that have survived are barely hanging on. So what they're hoping for, they're looking ahead to the holiday surge in traffic. As we all know, Black Friday is huge in Mexico. It's huge here also. And they're hoping that a lot of the traffic that they're seeing coming in, which are tens of thousands of passengers, uh, travelers, shoppers every single day, that those people walk on over to a lot of these local shops. They're hoping that that makes a difference. But we should also mention that regardless of what's happening here in Laredo, this is a huge plus for commerce in San Antonio. We spoke with the Chamber of Commerce and they say that in the last 21 months when this border was closed to non-essential travel, San Antonio lost about $400 million in commerce. So now that a lot of these people are coming back, their arms are wide open. They are welcoming these people back because they're hoping that this is exactly the boost that our local economy needs just in time for the holiday season. Here's the thing, though. Black Friday is one week away, and we should tell people that the wait times here along the border, they're going to be very long. We spoke with U.S. Customs today, and they say that some people are waiting two hours to, cr to cross the border into the U.S. Now, by next week, that wait time can go all the way up to four hours. And we'll just have to wait and see what kind of impact that's going to have on local shops here in Laredo. Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. Also in your morning headlines, a new lawsuit filed in the wake of the Astroworld Music Festival tragedy is seeking $2 billion in damages. A press release from the Thomas J. Henry Law Firm says it represents 282 concert goers in the lawsuit. It says the plaintiffs are experiencing extreme pain and suffering, loss of earnings, emotional distress, and medical expenses from the tragedy. The suit names several defendants, including singer Travis Scott, Apple Music, promoter Live Nation, and others. Ten people died as a result of their injuries from the chaotic surge of the concert crowd in Houston the night of November 5th. And more than 140 lawsuits have now been filed in the aftermath of the tragedy. Earlier in the week, 125 plaintiffs signed on to a lawsuit seeking more than $750 million. Out of the latest in the fight against COVID, just over 17 million fully vaccinated seniors have received a COVID booster shot. Now, this is actually creating some concern among public health experts because 40 million people ages 65 and older completed their initial vaccine series at least six months ago. The booster is recommended because the protection of the vaccine tends to wane over time. The CDC reports that about 59% of the total U.S. population is fully vaccinated against COVID and about 69% of the total population has received at least one dose. Time now 507 51 degrees out and coming up on GMSA one of the oldest surviving copies of the U.S. Constitution sold at auction how much it went for and the history behind it. That whole story is so crazy literally just a group of people that collect it. it's amazing <laughs> and could this be the future of grocery shopping how Amazon is actually letting customers buy what they need without going through the checkout line. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. Yay, we can wear our jackets. Well, at least for the morning and actually pretty much throughout the day. We're going to check in with Mike later to see what we can expect this weekend. Hi, welcome back. It's 511. In your morning consumer headlines, Amazon rolling out what could be the future of grocery shopping. They have opened their first Amazon Fresh store in a suburb of Los Angeles. And there's no checkout line. Shoppers can just walk in, grab what they need, and walk out. The store is equipped with hundreds of cameras and sensors on the shelves. It tracks what customers take and charges their Amazon account automatically. But the new technology isn't replacing people. Amazon hired hundreds of employees for the store to help customers navigate the system or to fill online orders. Well, one of the oldest surviving copies of the United States Constitution has a new owner or several owners. So the company that held the auction says that this copy of the Constitution sold for $41 million. It was printed in 1787 for delegates of the Constitutional Convention and the Continental Congress. They had been drafting the document and their printers created 500 copies of the final official edition. Only a few are left. And this one is now in private hands of a decentralized autonomous organization.
And Spotify is making it a little easier to karaoke using its streaming app. The service says users will now have access to real-time lyrics right on its platform. Spotify says the new feature is free and will be available across mobile devices, TVs, gaming systems, and desktop computers. The company says they added lyrics because it was one of the most requested features from listeners across the globe. Do you have a go-to karaoke song? Not, not really. I, I mean, it looks like fun, but I don't want people to judge me. So I usually, <laughs> I usually just sit in the back and listen to everybody else. So no, I don't have a song. Do you? Really fair. Uh, probably just Beatles songs Beatles or Imagine. Songs. Oh, well, that's safe. Gets the crowd going. Yeah, or, or you know, happy birthday is pretty happy, safe. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Not many judgments there. No. Just about 513, 50 degrees out. And coming up next, Apple is working to launch a fully self-driving car and Walmart testing drone delivery service. Details in your tech bites after the break. I quench the Lactate is 100% real milk, just without the lactose, so you can enjoy it even if you're sensitive to dairy. So anyone who says lactate isn't real milk is also saying Mabel here isn't a real cow. And she really hates that. <laughs> Probably covered in germs. Protection. Lysol to go kills 99.9% .9 of viruses and bacteria, including the COVID-19 virus. Take trusted Lysol protection, now on the go. Lysol, what it takes to protect. Good morning and welcome back. Apple reportedly speeding up plans to produce a fully self-driving car in just the next few years. ABC's at Mona Costa, our Abdi has the details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, a self-driving electric car may be Apple's next big thing. The tech giant is reportedly working to put a futuristic vehicle on the road by 2025. Sources tell Bloomberg the goal is to make the Apple car fully autonomous. That means no pedals, no steering, and no input from anyone on board. Walmart is teaming up with the drone delivery company Zipline to bring much-needed health and wellness items to customers' homes. Drones will drop drugstore items in front or backyards within 30 minutes of purchase. For now, the surface is only available in Arkansas. Finally, Nike has teamed up with Roblox on a virtual world called Nike Land. It's modeled after Nike's real life headquarters. Users can play games, participate in activities linked in actual events. The company also plans to use Nike Land to introduce new products. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great weekend. One, I really don't understand the metaverse or Roblox that much, but two, yet, <laughs> would you trust a self-driving car? No. Because okay, <laughs> I felt like a crazy person. I was like, no. I don't trust self-driving you know, cars. And, you know, maybe like when we're in our 80s, you know, maybe everybody's like, ah, you know, you guys don't trust anything. And then a lot of people will be using them. But nope, I, no, nope, not me. No, thank you. Yeah, what about you, Stephen Cavazos? No, I would not trust a uh, car that drives by itself. And also got to bring up that Nike thing that they just yeah. showed. That. Mm -hmm. uh, does that mean everybody's looks that fit? there because they all look fit. I mean, I'd probably be a stick figure if I was on that thing. Uh, let's take a look right now. No driving cars uh, that are out there uh, driving on their own. But as you can see, it looks like traffic has been light throughout the morning. 35 and 37. A few folks out there getting their morning started. Maybe grab that cup of coffee and enjoy the drive to work this morning. You're not going to find any real delays as we get this new day started. But let's go ahead and take you to the map and show you how things are shaping up. We talked about some road work uh, out here towards 35, a little bit past New Braunfels at FM 306. It's in those south Southbound lanes. Uh, yesterday we saw a big stretch of red and orange building in those lanes. Looks like the crews have wrapped up and we're not seeing any uh, any delays right now if you're traveling into the San Antonio area, maybe in the next few minutes. So some good news there. And as we take you over to the wider look at the map, yeah, been pretty much green on the screen and we're not mad about it as we're getting ready to start the weekend. Let's go ahead and take you to the gas prices if you're planning any road trips, uh, especially with Thanksgiving holidays coming up. We know a lot of folks are going to be getting their uh, getting on the roads, but here's what we can expect today. As of right now, AAA does report the average gas price in Bear County is 288 around the state. We're looking at 302 and the country has hold steady at 341. So we're going to continue to watch these gas prices, but keep in mind the demand has gone up as well as those crude oil prices. So we will continue to watch these closely as well as the roadways here from our shots at Transguide guys. Back to self-driving cars, I would <laughs> trust a self-driving car than a lot of drivers, but that's Ooh, fair. Well, that's would it be able to use a blinker? Man. Oh, blinkers are, are think, I mean, but think about it. if you fly in a commercial airliner, I mean, just yeah. about from the moment wheels up, 
Computers taking off. See, now I, I'm thinking about it. I'm going to get on the plane next time. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> Max is like, excuse mm. me, let me just, <laughs> let me just take over. I got here. this. <laughs> Anyway, anyway. <laughs> all right, uh, the lunar eclipse is over, and here's a picture that was taken right before the lunar eclipse, and there was the problem. You can see, yeah, the moon is uh, shining through some of those clouds, but we had that layer of clouds that moved on in here, and that obscured the lunar eclipse from a lot of folks, and hopefully we'll get to see the moon setting. We got this camera pointed off to the west, and you can see we still have plenty of those clouds, and that's what's keeping temperatures up. Uh, Mid-40s, Bernie stage, low 40s up there around Cumberland, even upper 30s further up to the north where there are thinner clouds, but the cloud cover acted like a, a blanket on top of us. And so that is what has kept temperatures almost 10 degrees above what we're now. We're not done cooling off yet, but that cloud cover, like I said, acts like a blanket, and that's what helped to keep temperatures up. The air is dry enough out there, bone dry air right now, and we're going for a high temperature today up to 67. Yesterday, now officially in the books, yesterday's high was 70, but that was right after midnight. And then in the afternoon, we only got up into about the 64, 65 degree range. But we'll be uh, there or a little bit warmer later on this afternoon. Good looking day today with this dry air. And once these low clouds get out of here, it's going to be just fantastic. All right, let's go into the future. And uh, we might have a couple of clouds hanging around here tomorrow morning. We'll have dry air. It's going to be cold tomorrow morning while well down in the 40s. And then throughout the afternoon. The humidity is really going to start to come back in here late tomorrow and then overnight into Sunday. And so we'll probably have, well, we will have a lot of clouds, maybe a little bit of fog or mist on Sunday. Then the front comes on through here. It may touch off a couple of showers as we go into uh, Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. Not a great chance of rain. Monday, cooler, clear, very chilly early Tuesday morning. Then we start to see the humidity come back in here. Uh, a lot more clouds, maybe a chance of rain late Wednesday. And right now it's looking like we've got a fairly decent chance of rain on Thanksgiving and perhaps even extending into a portion of Friday as well, because we've got a system which is going to be moving on in here. And it's one of those that kind of lingers and comes on in and stays like an unwanted house guest for a while. So 60. Well, at least we do have some rain in the forecast, though, which is good. Uh, 62 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature then makes it up to 67. A lot of sunshine. Uh, you can probably go without a jacket this afternoon, but if you are going to be out this evening, then definitely take one because it's going to cool off pretty quickly. 74 tomorrow, very chilly start and the humidity comes back in late and then Sunday, a couple of showers around here. Front late on Sunday, cooler, clear Monday, very cold Tuesday morning. And then we go right back into the same sequence where more humidity, milder temperatures, much better rain chance, though, as it looks right now, Thursday and probably Friday. Uh oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do. I say that I haven't registered yet, but I plan to do a 5K on Thanksgiving morning. Nice turkey trot. Turkey yeah. trot. Yeah. yeah, so it'll be interesting getting dressed for that event. Yeah. So it won't be too cold, but it will be uh, it's looking wet. Mm, okay. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Time now, 522, 50 degrees out. And coming up next in your entertainment news, Adele has new music Whoa. out. And there's a documentary about one of the Beach Boys. Details after the break. Adele's new album is out now. 30 is the fourth studio recording from the British singer-songwriter. The music video for the single Easy On Me has surpassed 163 million views since it premiered on YouTube in October. Jumped out of bed this morning with a smile upon my face. Also just released is Sting's new album, The Bridge, featuring this tune, If It's Love, which marks the first time Sting has whistled in a song. I define a hit song when people are whistling it, like window cleaners or people painting houses or cab drivers. When they're whistling your song, that's a hit. That's a real hit. So I thought I'd bypass the whole thing and start whistling myself. And I haven't done it on record before, so it's quite a revelation to me as well. The idea of doing an interview makes Brian nervous. Rolling Stone editor Jason Fine came up with a clever way to make Brian Wilson feel more comfortable during interviews for the documentary Brian Wilson Long Promised Road. Driving, talking, and listening to music. For me, I mean, you know, driving around LA with Brian is is just just a great good time. We just have a good time listening to music and talking about telling stories, talking about our families a lot. 
Right. That must have been a really exciting time. It was. The film is out now in theaters and on VOD. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. The beauty of it. So interesting. We are seeing that platform of interviewing people in cars so much more and more popular nowadays. Yeah, and I've also seen the show, I don't remember what it's called, but with the karaoke. Carpool karaoke? I think so, yeah. in the car. That's pretty neat, too. That, I think Jay Leno has like a car show where he interviews people in it. I think Jerry Seinfeld had one. Yeah, as long there as you you're driving safely. Exactly. <laughs> Time now, 527, 50 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA, an investigation underway regarding social media being pushed on teens what lawmakers are looking into and what the company Meta is saying about all this. Plus, we're gonna have an update on the No Shave November team, our program, how your donations are making a huge impact, raising money for cancer research, treatment, and prevention. As you head out this morning, San Antonio police want you to keep your eyes open for a car that may be carrying an abducted child. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. The fallout from Meta, formerly known as Facebook, continues. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. How the social media giant is under investigation. Coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting today in the 50s. You will want to grab a jacket and maybe you'll want to hold on to it all day long, especially if you're headed to Friday football. Good morning. It is Friday, November 19th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. It's funny because 50 degrees cold for us here, but when I talk to friends and family on the East Coast, oh, right. <laughs> they're like, low of 50? It's high of 50 today. <laughs> they're like, that's a cakewalk. Yeah, they're like, oh, that's like a no jacket, like zip up, good to go kind of yeah, day. It's just like an easy, even out here, we're like, oh my gosh, grab the heavy jacket <laughs> and, and a scarf. <laughs> But then the opposite is true. It's true. In, they, in the summertime, the heat, you know, they yeah. get above 85 going. <laughs> All right, uh, way at the top of your screen, there is the moon, the full moon. Of course, it is past now. The eclipse uh, peaked at uh, three o'clock this morning, approximately, and there were a lot of clouds out there. Obviously, the the moon is shining right now. We don't have a real thick cloud cover, but the uh, the clouds obscured that full moon for a, or the uh, eclipse, pardon me, for a lot of folks, and also helped keep temperatures up. We're at 50 right now. We've got bone dry air. I mean, 29 for a dew point. Very, very low. Uh, wind is out of the north at five miles per hour, but we stayed a little bit warmer than what we had expected because, like I said, that cloud cover acted like kind of a blanket. 47 in Kerrville and then drops down to 39 in Fredericksburg, where there is obviously more clear skies out there, so no blanket of clouds on top up there in northern portions of the hill country and also up to the northeast. Mold is moderate and juniper is on the low side and throughout the rest of today, some leftover morning clouds then 62 at noon. Yeah, still maybe a light jack. And then you can probably do without it at uh, 5 o'clock later on today. It's 67 degrees, but with the clear skies, it's going to cool off very quickly. Then this evening, very cold tomorrow morning. Warming up quickly. We've got uh, kind of chunks of a, a sequence of days coming up here going into next week. And that does include a couple of fronts and does include some rain, especially late in the week. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, anything big going on there causing problems? No, no problems just yet, Mike. But Loop 410 at Broadway, we are seeing those flashing lights out there indicating we do have a situation working at this hour. You can see from this view, we see some vehicles going through there pretty smoothly without any trouble. However, we do have a vehicle that looks like it may be a stall out there. Of course, they are receiving assistance from uh, looks like a possible TxDOT hero truck. Let's go ahead and take you to the map and see what that's looking like and if we're seeing any buildup out there. Uh, we're not there in those westbound lanes of 410 at Broadway Street, so that's some good news as we're getting the day started. We know more people will be getting out on the roadways, so make sure you give those first responders plenty of room to help those drivers when they are needing assistance. Let's take a wider look at the map. Thankfully, it has stayed steady throughout the morning. We've been seeing a lot of green on the screen as we're getting the weekend rolling here. As we get into these inbound times, we're seeing the same situation here right now coming in from Seguin, right? 10, 29 minutes on I-10 to the downtown San Antonio area. 22 coming in from Lavernia and 87. Right now we're looking about 28 minutes coming in from Floresville. We'll continue to watch this uh, stall out here at Loop 410 at Broadway, but make sure to keep your eyes on the road as well. Max Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police are calling on the public to help bring a missing team home. With the help of the Texas Department of Transportation, they have issued an Amber Alert about her disappearance. Katrina Weber is live downtown with that story. And Katrina, what or who should people be looking for? 
Well, Stephanie, as the text dot sign says behind me, police are asking people to keep a watch for a gold Chevy Impala. Now, unlike other Amber Alert cases, there's no license plate given on the signs, but that color and the type of car, that combination isn't exactly common. The police say that that car and the driver in it may have something to do with the disappearance of 13-year-old Bella Martinez. She was last seen around 1.30 yesterday afternoon on the south side in the 400 block of Hotwells Boulevard. The alert says Martinez is about 5 feet 4 inches tall, 170 pounds, and was dressed in a black t-shirt and black ripped jeans with black Croc-style shoes. It also lists 17-year-old Ariel Moreno as a suspect in her abduction. He's about 5 feet 6 inches tall and weighs about 200 pounds. If you see either of them or that gold Chevy Impala, you're asked to call the San Antonio Police Department at 210-207-7660. Again, that's 210-207-7660. Reporting live from downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thanks, Katrina. In your morning headlines, defense attorneys for the three men accused of killing Ahmad Arbery rested their cases yesterday after calling a total of seven witnesses. The, pol the people who testified in the men's defense included the man who fatally shot Arbery, Travis McMichael. Six neighbors testified about their concerns regarding crime in the neighborhood. McMichael and his father, Greg McMichael, armed themselves and pursued the 25-year-old man in a truck after he ran past their home from the house under construction. A neighbor joined the chase in his own truck and recorded cell phone video. More potential fallout for Meta, the company formerly known as Facebook. Attorney generals across a number of states are now investigating whether the social media giant pushed their app Instagram onto teens. Right. This all comes after a whistleblower and former employee released internal research, and she even testified on the subject on Capitol Hill. ABC's M. Wynn explains what the lawmakers are now looking into, plus reaction from the social network. This morning, new problems for the social media giant Meta, formerly known as Facebook. A bipartisan group of attorneys general from 11 states in the District of Columbia is investigating accusations that Meta promoted Instagram while knowing about the negative mental health impact the app can have on young people. Massachusetts Attorney General says the states are looking into whether the company's actions violated state consumer protection laws, saying Meta, quote, chose to ignore or in some cases double down on known manipulations that pose a real threat to physical and mental health, exploiting children in the interest of profit. The thing I saw at Facebook over and over again was there were conflicts of interest between what was good for the public and what was good for Facebook. Pressure on Meta has been escalating since whistleblower Francis Hogan, a former Facebook employee, leaked internal research that suggested teens suffered body image issues when using the app. 32 percent of teen girls saying when they feel bad about their bodies, Instagram makes them feel even worse. Privately, Facebook researchers and experts have been ringing the alarm for years. The new investigation by officials at the state level is also looking into the techniques Meta uses to attract young people to the app and get them to spend more time using it. Instagram pushing back, saying, quote, these accusations are false and demonstrate a deep misunderstanding of the facts, saying it's introduced parental supervision tools and other ways to protect teens. Overnight, Connecticut Senator Richard Blumenthal, who led the congressional hearing on the subject, called on Facebook to release all of its internal research. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. At time now, 538, 50 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, the Roadrunners getting ready for their biggest game yet. We're going to have a preview later in sports. And next, your donations making a huge impact in No Shave November. The program and our team raising money for cancer research, treatment, and prevention. We're going to have an update. And taking a look outside with a live cam, another chilly morning here in San Antonio. We are liking the weather change, but if you don't like it, don't worry. Hang on to this weekend. Things will change a little bit. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. We are halfway through No Shave November. The beard's coming in strong. Yeah, looks good, Max. Oh, thank you. Stephen Cavazos joins us now with an update on how things are going. Good morning. Speak for yourself, Max. <laughs> I mean, I got, I got to stand next to this guy today. He's looking like Jake Gyllenhaal, no, and I'm looking like I'm... 
I, I can't think of anybody that comes straight to mind. But, you know, it's all for a good cause. All the guys are looking a little bit more scruffy these days if you've been watching the newscast. Uh, and we have some great news. We have raised right now, as of today, over $5,600. Now, keep in mind, all that money is going back towards cancer research, treatment, and prevention. And now we're going to take a look and listen to why Max Massey is growing it out. No Shave November is so important to me. We all have friends, family, acquaintances who have gone through cancer, gone through something, or maybe battling it right now. So the mission for this month is raise awareness via our faces on a variety of platforms, raise as much money as possible, and obviously raise more than $10,000. So right now, if you can, donate every dollar counts. Great message, Max. And for more information, just head to ksat.com slash no shave there. You will also find a link to donate to Team KSAT. And we're going to continue to share those updates right here on GMSA. And of course, as I mentioned, we have over $5,600. The guys are looking a little bit scruffier these days. And, you know, in Mike's famous words, hair does not grow on steel, Max. So oh, well done. I, 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 don't, nice. well, I don't have got jaws of steel. Steel but jaws, I you know like what? it. Steel jaws. So what people don't know about that video, it was shot by Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, uh, shot uh, Mike Osterhages and uh, we saw David Sears as well. And so we're going to continue to share those videos throughout the rest of November. So be sure to head over to caseup.com slash no shave. We've been getting a lot of donations from the community. So keep them pouring in. Is Mark still number one? He's still number one. But <laughs> Mike, <laughs> Mike is, uh, I believe you're now number three. Okay. Oh, you're Have I fallen to four? You're number two. I'm, I, I fall okay. into five. So okay. go Where's team. Nice. Team <laughs> so great here. Where's Justin Horn in this? Oh, wait, I got to look that up again, but okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's it's Mark and Max. You guys yeah. are almost okay. neck and neck. Uh, help us tell, beat Mark. Man tell, of the people, yeah. help us beat Mark. You're super competitive. Yeah, keep <laughs> it, it's, it's, but it's all, all for a good cause. <laughs> go team gray and silver. Gotta it, Mike's over there just like, <laughs> go it's team It's all silver. for a good cause yeah. and good fun. No, everyone's doing a great job. We're so glad that you're on board and taking charge this year, Stephen, with Yeah, this. maybe next year I'll grow a little few more hairs on this. No, you... Look handsome. Oh, Jaws of so steel. Nice. Jaws of steel. There All you right. go. Thank you, Thank Steven. You Time now, 544, 50 degrees out. We'll be right back. All right, birds up, meep, meep. Undefeated and 15th ranked UTSA Roadrunners facing their biggest challenge of the year of game history. They are putting up their unprecedented 10 and 0 season on the line against the defending Conference USA champs, University of Alabama, Birmingham, for the Conference West Division title. So if the Roadrunners win, they will host the Conference USA Championship Friday, December 3rd in the Alamo Dome. Yesterday, it was announced that senior quarterback Frank Harris will be introduced before kickoff Saturday as part of Senior Day and running back Sincere McCormick. They have been named semifinalists for the Earl Campbell Tyler Rose Award, given out to the top offensive player in all of college football with ties to Texas. So, birds up, lots of awards to be given out, and that is because this team has been dominant offense and defense. There you go. You just saw them. Love that shot. 75-yard score from the house. I believe that was like the third play of the game. It's been an exciting season and yeah. you know we're so glad that uh, to see to see them do so well I mean it started off good and it just keeps getting better and better yeah so awesome job guys much like our show speaking of which <laughs> Stephen Cavazos <laughs> well uh, I don't even know how to follow that <laughs> uh, well you know things aren't looking uh, exciting out here on the roadways as we take a look at trans guide we still have these flashing lights out there we do have a stalled vehicle to report loop 410 at Broadway is where this has been pinpointed at you can see traffic right now still moving through there pretty smoothly but make sure you're giving those first responders plenty of room to help that those drivers out that are experiencing that trouble because it is still very dark out there and the last place that anybody wants to be at is can be stranded along the highways. Let's go ahead and take a look at the map and show you how things are looking. That's all detected in the westbound lanes of 410 right at Broadway. Again, not causing any issues when it comes to those traffic delays. So lots of green in those westbound lanes. But as we take a jump, we're seeing that trend continue right over here at off I-10 westbound at UTSA Boulevard. As we are getting this morning started, we know more folks are going to be getting out on the roadways when we get closer to that morning rush. So make sure your vehicles are working properly. And I have to say, because of that cooler weather that's come in, make sure that your tires are looking a-OK -okay before you get out on the roads, guys. Loop 410 at Broadway, a wider look does show. We got a few more folks out there. Just make sure to follow the rules of the road. Good reminder. You know, it's hard to take a picture of the moon with your it cell is. phone. <laughs>
It is, but this one looks nice. I tried uh, the other night when we were at the, the I did too, because it was so nice. Like, it's just this little fuzzy dot yes. out there. So anyway, that's a great picture of the moon wow. as it was just rising. Of course, the eclipse occurred earlier this morning from between about uh, 120 and 430 or so, and it was a partial eclipse. Almost all of the, the moon's gone. We've got a couple of those good eclipse pictures to show you uh, coming up in the next hour, but that says the moon is rising. Oh, it's right behind that banner. There you can see the moon is setting. We're just going to keep the camera over here throughout the rest of the morning. We'll be able to watch the moon set. So obviously not a thick cloud cover, but enough in some places to obscure the eclipse and then also to uh, keep temperatures up a little bit warmer than what was expected. So we've got some very dry air in place right now. We had uh, light wind, have light winds and dry air, but that little bit of a cloud cover. So that's what uh, again kept temperatures up and the dry air is going to be sticking around through tomorrow morning. Then throughout the day, the humidity is really going to start to come back in here and look at this uh, just big roller coaster. It's it's almost like you take about three or four days and then cut and paste over the next uh, seven days over the rest of uh, or going into next week, I should say. So we get a lot of humidity uh, on Sunday and then another front moves through here. That's going to dry things out. Then we do the same pattern again going into the mid to latter portion of next week. So here's long range computer model and we've got Beautiful day today, great night tonight, tomorrow, maybe a couple of clouds here and there. We are going to see, like I said, more humidity uh, tomorrow come in here, maybe some mist and a little bit of fog early Sunday morning, and then a couple of showers later in the day on Sunday. Now, this is one of those computer models where it's just kind of a, a broad brush painting in rain chances, so it's not like it's going to be a great chance of rain on Sunday, but the front's going to move through. That'll clear us out for Monday and much, much cooler Monday and Tuesday morning. Then we'll see the humidity start to return later Tuesday, perhaps a couple of showers by Wednesday, but the better chance of rain is going to be Thursday. And this particular computer model does keep the rain chances then sticking around into Friday. There's another long range model that has the rain kind of tapering off a lot more by Friday. Here's what's going on. So we've got this kind of tranquil uh, pattern. Those upper level wind lines go straight west to east. We get this front a little bit of a front right there moving through on Sunday, and then we get somewhat mild but we're watching that low off there to the west and what's going to be happening is this becomes one of these cutoff lows. It's just kind of spinning like a top by itself. They take a while to move on through here and there's nothing really to give them a good direct shove. And so that's why it's still as far as how long the rain's going to be lasting into next week. Kind of an iffy situation because those things sometimes have a little bit of a mind of their own. 62 at noon today, partly cloudy skies, high temperature up to 67. Great looking day. Open up the windows kind of a day again. It's going to cool off quickly tonight down into the uh, mid 40s tomorrow. 74 for a high, more humidity in the afternoon. Front late Sunday, a couple of showers. Cool starting off next week and then milder and rain chances on Thanksgiving. Rain on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, good napping football weather. This there is you go. true. It's perfect. True. Great napping weather. We'll yeah. see. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. 552, 49 degrees out. And let's look at your lotto numbers. We have pick 3008, Fireball 3, and Daily 4, 6826, Fireball 3. Cash 5, 17, 19, 21, 25, 31. Texas 2 step, 6, 14, 17, 26, big number 30. Good morning and welcome back. If there's a gamer in your life who seems extra busy this weekend, that is because there's a new Pokemon game out today. CNN's Rick Damagella has the story. Pokemon trainers can once again explore the Sinnoh region to try and catch them all in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. These are uh, two games that are based off of the Nintendo DS originals, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, and they've been buffed up and shined, as you would say. <laughs> what they've done is they've definitely traded big on the nostalgia, and they've made a conscious effort to make this game look kind of like we imagined the classic games to look like. So we've got a top-down perspective. We've got this chibi, big-headed, cutesy art style to the characters, and it looks like the classic Pokemon experience. 
Pokemon has always been a series that is traded on nostalgia. You know, it's a it's a game series that really understands that people start playing these games when they're quite young and they stay with them until they share them with their own children. You know, and I think that's one of the cool things about uh, Pokemon Brilliant uh, Diamond and Shining Pearl is that there's going to be a lot of players that played these games originally that are going to share them with the younger generation. Catching them all in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. All right, so a lot coming up on GMSA. A burning car rescue in Atlanta. The incident all caught on camera. We're going to explain. And a heartwarming moment at a local football game. Two brothers reunited after more than a year apart. And an argument leads to an overnight shooting on the city's southeast side. We'll explain what we know so far from investigators. Plus, what you need to know on the roadways before you head out the door. We're going to check in with Stephen Cavazos in just a few moments. This morning, the U.S. is now letting non-essential travelers in at the border. How it's affecting the local economy just ahead. And a crucial day in the United States in the fight against COVID. We'll explain why. And taking a look outside oh. with live cam. Hey, that's a cool shot there. Uh, we dipped down to 49 degrees now. Definitely grab that jacket. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Friday, November 19th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Happy Friday. That was an amazing picture of the moon. Yeah, it's uh, very exciting because of the, the picture and mm -hmm. because it's Friday. We're all excited about that. That's true. And a cold Friday to end the week. It's, it's chilly out there. We didn't uh, get as cold as what we expected. We had kind of a blanket on top of us this morning. Those clouds hung in there, so a lot of folks didn't get to see the eclipse mm. this morning earlier. And now, as you can see, that uh, blanket of clouds has kind of uh, kind of been scooted away in some spots. So there's the moon right behind that banner, and it is obviously setting. It is the, the full moon, of course, and uh, yeah, it's just gorgeous out there. Here's what it looks like on the uh, satellite picture right now, and you can see this darker shade right there and then all of a sudden it kind of starts to erode right here in Bear County. So that's why we can now see the moon, but we've got a lot more clouds off to the southwest. So temperatures are in the mid 50s and then where there's no blanket up to the north, it's uh, well anywhere 5, 10 degrees cooler and that's going to be the situation tonight as far as no blanket on top of us and so therefore it's going to be much much chillier by tomorrow morning mold is on the moderate side juniper is low and throughout the day we are going to see just a really nice day we are going to be right around uh, say low 50s as the sun is coming up and then later on this afternoon we'll make it all the way up into the low 60s by noon and then top off right around mid upper 60s maybe up a couple of notches from where we were yesterday afternoon and 67 still just slightly below normal but an absolutely beautiful day humidity's low clear cool tonight it's going to be a great start tomorrow then we're going to start to change very quickly got a couple of fronts moving on through here throughout the next week one sunday and then later on in the week and then also some rain chances especially as we head in toward thanksgiving a closer look at that forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority Stephen cavazos what's the latest sir good morning mike and if you're at home right now sipping that cup of coffee let's take a quick look at the roadways right now see what you can expect before your early morning drive right now 35 or 37 traffic has been pretty much light throughout the morning however we have spotted a few problems in terms of those stalls but before we get to that we really do want to take a look around 37 at Southeast Military. Looks like traffic has been light throughout the morning, but keep in mind it is 6 a.m. So we know we are inching closer to that morning rush hour. So we will be seeing more folks out there probably in the next 45 minutes or so. But let's go ahead and take a look right now that we still have this pesky stall out at Loop 410 westbound at Broadway Street, not causing any issues. And we take you further down over here to a stall off Loop 410 eastbound at Evers Road. This is a new one that popped up, taking you up here to I-10 westbound at UTSA Boulevard. We still have a stall there as well. So some of these are lingering around. Make sure when you see those flashing lights to move over or slow down. But taking you to these inbound times, if you're traveling into the San Antonio area, you're not going to encounter any delays at this hour. Right now, 37, 28 minutes from Pleasanton, 17 on 35 from Lytle, and 19 minutes coming in from Castrol and Highway 90. One last look around town. We're going to keep a close eye on those stalls and give you all the updates you need to know before you head out the door. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. An active Amber Alert has been issued for a missing 13-year-old. 
San Antonio police are searching for Bella Martinez. She's 5'4 with black hair and brown eyes. She was last seen wearing a black shirt and black ripped jeans. They believe she may be with this teen, 17 year old Ariel Moreno. Police are looking for him as well in connection to Martinez's abduction. Moreno was seen driving a gold Chevy Impala with a dent on the passenger door. If you know where police can find either of these teens, you're asked to call the police department. This morning, a man behind bars now facing charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. So take a look. This is 36 year old Joshua Armendariz. According to an arrest affidavit, he allegedly got into a fight with a man outside a gas station, attacking him with a crowbar. Then he got into his vehicle. Now the, the arrest affidavit reads that he then tried to run the man over two people injured in the situation. No word yet on their condition. And a lot of people talking about the border now. The U.S. is now allowing non-essential travelers in. That's right. Our Stefania Jimenez in Laredo. She shows us how the local economy now being impacted by this opening. The U.S.-Mexico border opened to non-essential travelers 11 days ago, and we are seeing an impact already, but the type of impact depends on where you are along the border. Our colleague Alicia Barrera was in Eagle Pass, where she reported on Operation Steel Curtain, where Governor Greg Abbott put shipping containers along the border there to plug the gaps in the wall to make sure that undocumented immigrants don't come through. So obviously in Eagle Pass, the concern more has to do with border security issues. Here in Laredo, where we are right now, the concern really has to do with the economy. A lot of these stores here in Laredo, just a stone's throw away from the border, have taken a really hard hit in the last 21 months when this border was closed to non-essential travel. We've seen a lot of boarded up businesses and a lot of the businesses that have survived are barely hanging on. So what they're hoping for, they're looking ahead to the holiday surge in traffic. As we all know, Black Friday is huge in Mexico. It's huge here also. And they're hoping that a lot of the traffic that they're seeing coming in, which are tens of thousands of passengers, uh, travelers, shoppers every single day that those people walk on over to a lot of these local shops. They're hoping that that makes a difference. But we should also mention that regardless of what's happening here in Laredo, this is a huge plus for commerce in San Antonio. We spoke with the Chamber of Commerce and they say that in the last 21 months when this border was closed to non-essential travel, San Antonio lost about $400 million in commerce. So now that a lot of these people are coming back, their arms are wide open. They are welcoming these people back because they're hoping that this is exactly the boost that our local economy needs just in time for the holiday season. Here's the thing, though. Black Friday is one week away, and we should tell people that the wait times here along the border, they're going to be very long. We spoke with U.S. Customs today, and they say that some people are waiting two hours to, cr to cross the border into the U.S. Now, by next week, that wait time can go all the way up to four hours. And we'll just have to wait and see what kind of impact that's going to have on local shops here in Laredo. Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Stephanie. Well, the Salvation Army's annual Red Kettle campaign kicks off today. It raises money to help fund its year-round initiatives. This year, they're actually facing a shortage of bell ringers. The organization wants to make sure every site is staffed every day. There are volunteer opportunities for you to participate, and there are even paid positions as well. If you're interested in volunteering, just head to KSAT.com for all the info. You can also call the number on your screen, 210-352. 2000, the Red Kettle campaign runs through December 24th. And happening tomorrow in Kerrville, the VA Community Living Center hosting a nursing job fair. They're looking to fill a registered nurse, a licensed vocational nurse, and nurse assistant positions. You can expect on-site interviews and resume reviews. It's happening tomorrow morning from 8 to noon at the Kerrville VA Medical Center's auditorium. Out of the latest in the pandemic, a new report this morning on the origins of COVID-19. A new study finds the first known case of COVID was actually at a vendor at a wet market in Wuhan, China. The scientists behind the study analyzed public records to make that conclusion. Meanwhile, here in the U.S., today is a crucial day in the fight against the virus. ABC's Aika Jaji explains. 
This morning, millions of Americans are one step closer to getting an extra boost of protection against COVID. The CDC today is expected to sign off on boosters for all adults after getting the green light from the FDA. I think as soon as possible, especially around the holidays, that's what motivated me and most of my family. The growing demand for increased immunity comes days before the big holiday travel rush. And with COVID infections rising more than 35 percent nationwide in the last three weeks. And now new research shows symptoms for so-called long haulers may stick around for life. A new study finds more than one million Americans who suffered with COVID may have permanently lost their sense of smell. In the meantime, a remarkable COVID survival story in Maine. I love you. Bettina Lerman, who was unvaccinated, ended up in a coma for more than a month. Her family was planning her funeral and even sold her belongings. But then, on the day they planned to take her off life support, her doctor called with surprising news. I need you to come up to the hospital right away. I'm like, what? Is something wrong? And he goes, well, your mother just woke up. I literally dropped the phone. I was like, what? <laughs> I mean, because we were supposed to be terminating life support that day. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, New York. And for those of you watching, you may have just gotten an Amber Alert on your phone. 13-year-old Bella Martinez, now our Katrina Weber, has been following this story very closely throughout the morning. She's actually going to be joining us live with an update. What you need to look out for coming up at 6.30. That's right. And for now, it is 6.09 and 49 degrees out there. Still ahead here on GMSA, the American Music Awards set for this weekend, and fans will cast their votes on an unusual platform. We're going to explain. And it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. <laughs> We're going to tell you about an outdoor ice rink that opens today right here in San Antonio. And what perfect weather to do it. 49 degrees out there. Beautiful shot of the moon. Whew. Picturesque. We're going to check in with Mike Osterhage and Stephen Cavazos in just a bit. Good morning everyone. Time now is 613 and we already have plenty of flashing lights out there. This is a shot from Transguided 90 West at Zazamora. As we take a closer look, it does appear that we have another stall out there and this is causing some issues. But this seems to be the trending problem at this hour as we are inching closer to morning rush. Let's take you right to the map and show you what we're looking at. This is in those eastbound lanes of Highway 90 at, Z at Zazamora. Again, make sure that you are watching out for those stalled vehicles because it's not the only one we've spotted. We still have the lingering problems right over here off Loop 410 westbound at Broadway Street. Taking you up here, we have one off I-10 westbound at UTSA Boulevard, one a little bit further down right here at Loop 410 eastbound at Evers Road. Wider look at the map, I think I counted about four stalls this morning, so you're not seeing any congestion just yet. Keep in mind, we're still pretty early on for this Friday morning, but we do know that the last place you're going to want to be stranded at is the highway, so make sure that you are checking those vehicles before you get out on the roadways, especially those tire that tire pressure as well, given the fact that it is a little bit cooler outside, guys. A good reminder and for school, definitely grab that jacket. Oh yeah, yeah, you'll definitely need it. And you know, it's one of those situations where just kind of keep it handy really over about the next week. Temperatures are going to be kind of, you know, going up and down. Humidity is going to be going up and down and uh, it's just nice to, to have it handy. So this morning, um, upper 40s here in town, even some low 40s and upper 30s in northern portions of the hill country. We do have a lot of clouds around here. Um, then we're going to continue to clear out. Now, some folks don't have as much in the way of clouds this morning. Others do have a lot more. It was that uh, low cloud cover that did keep the temperatures up slightly overnight and obscured a lot of folks from seeing this. That is the lunar eclipse from a couple of hours ago. Absolutely gorgeous. The peak of the eclipse was right around three o'clock this morning. And of course, it can only happen when there is a full moon and there is the moon setting and you can see just a couple of clouds hanging around here. But what a Great look. I mean, almost looks like the sun is out there. It's brightening things up so much. And of course, this is uh, called the the full beaver moon, according to the uh, the lore, the Native American Indian Lawrence, because the beavers prepared for winter and retreated into their lodges, also known as the deer running moon, freezing moon and the whitefish moon. Whatever you call it, it is gorgeous. All right, humidity its very low this morning, uh, but it was the cloud cover that, like I said, kept temperatures up because we had perfect conditions, at least two of three conditions to really get much colder. It's going to be much colder tomorrow morning. Then throughout the day, here comes the dew point temperatures and therefore the humidity, the moisture in the atmosphere really going to come up into Sunday. Front mo moves through, knocks the humidity out of here, and then we do it all over again going into next week. A chilly start to start off for a couple of days. Humidity comes back in, temperatures go up. But then this time around, now there is a small chance for some rain on Sunday, but 
then next week as we get toward the next front, much better chance for some rain. So today clear skies this afternoon, a couple of clouds tomorrow morning, maybe few more than overnight tomorrow night into Sunday as the humidity comes back in here. Maybe a couple of showers later on Sunday. Front moves through, clears us out. Going to be cold again Tuesday morning. Then the humidity comes back in here. A few more clouds Tuesday. Chance of rain Wednesday. And then Thursday is when the better chance of rain moves on in here. And this particular uh, computer model and one has us clearing out a little bit more or has the rain moving out a little quicker, but this particular model does keep the rain around Friday even into Saturday. And the reason for that is so we've got this kind of tranquil pattern in the atmosphere. Here's the little bit of a front that moves through on Sunday. Then we cool off then start to get milder as we go into the middle part of the week. But then this time around, there's a low developing out there to the west, and this is going to be one of those cutoff lows, and those things don't like to move very quickly. And so this particular model has this thing sort of hanging around even into Saturday, and that would keep rain chances around even into next Saturday and perhaps longer than that. So that'll definitely be something that we're going to be watching as we head in toward Thanksgiving. 62 today at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature up to 67. Just a gorgeous day today, mostly sunny skies, clear, chilly tonight, down to the uh, mid 40s tomorrow, 74 in the afternoon. Humidity comes back in tomorrow afternoon. Mist and drizzle, maybe a little fog Sunday morning up to 78. Very warm next front cools us back down again. Kind of the same process, but then this time around we got a much better chance for some rain coming in here by Thanksgiving. Steph, Max. Thank you, Mike. And this weekend people will cast their votes for the American Music Awards on TikTok. Oh, so you yeah. like cast your vote on mm -hmm. TikTok. Interesting. <laughs> okay, so all the action is going to be live from the Microsoft Theater over there in Los Angeles. Lots of surprises expected as the country's favorite musicians take the stage. This show unique because the fans decide who is taking home the top prizes. Pop newcomer and sensation Olivia Rodrigo, the most nominations this year, seven in total. And Cardi B will be hosting the big night. She's funny, she's sassy, and like you, there's this element of the unexpected with her that I think is gonna keep people captive. And you can watch the AMAs on Sunday night right here on KSET 12. There you go. All right, time now, 619, 49 degrees now. And for our San Antonio Spurs, the learning curve kind of continues there, and so does the losing streak. We're gonna have a wrap from last night's game in Minneapolis. There's a different way to treat HIV. It's once monthly injectable Cabinuva. Cabinuva is the only once a month complete HIV treatment for adults who are undetectable. Cabinuva helps keep me undetectable. It's two injections given by my healthcare provider once a month. HIV pills aren't on my mind. I love being able to pick up and go. Don't receive Cabinuva if you're allergic to its ingredients or taking certain medicines which may interact with Cabinuva. Serious side effects include allergic reactions, post-injection reactions, liver problems, and depression. If you have a rash and other allergic reaction symptoms, stop Cabinuva and get medical help right away. Tell your doctor if you have liver problems or mental health concerns, and if you are pregnant, breastfeeding, or considering pregnancy. Some of the most common side effects include injection site reactions, fever, and tiredness. If you switch to Cabinuva, attend all treatments appointments. With once a month Cabinuva, I'm good to go. Ask your doctor about once monthly Cabinuva. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. You're looking at one of the most sensitive and secretive rooms on the planet. This is military, civilian, contractor, this is Department of Defense, this is intelligence community. Uh, they're all resident here uh, and working side by side. The NSA Integrated Cyber Center. ABC News is the first network ever allowed to bring cameras inside. General Paul Nakasone oversees the world's most powerful electronic spy agency. This room is the nerve center of the NSA and U.S. Cyber Command. Agency supercharged with the world's most advanced spyware and most creative hackers to peer overseas and to virtually anything that has wires. In cyberspace, the advantage goes to those that have speed and agility. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more of our exclusive look inside the NSA. With your GMA First Look, I'm Pierre Thomas, ABC News.
All right, Spurs are back in action. They were last night with Jacopo returning to the lineup after missing the last seven games because of the league's health and safety protocol. However, not enough to get the Spurs the win over Minnesota. The Spurs are down by 11 at halftime. Third quarter, DeJounte to Keldon Johnson. Corner three, lead down to nine. Devin Vassell, big bright spot for the Spurs last night. Ooh, first pull up from three, and here we go. He had to Euro step around the guy cleaning the court and still dunked it. There you go, there's a life lesson. Don't let un, you know, unpredictable obstacles get in your way. Here's the thing, led the Spurs with 18 points. Mike liked that one. The Spurs would still trail by 15 in the fourth. In the end, the Timberwolves getting the W. The final from Minneapolis, 115 to 90. San Antonio falling to four and 11 on the season. Like I just told my teammates, we talked to the plane, the buses, the locker room, outside of our job. When we get on the floor, it's like everybody's here to talk to each other. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's, it's a lot of fixable things. Uh, and this is going to start with us. I know a lot of people are getting a little pessimistic, but it's an 82-game season. We're still getting early, remember? Okay. New season, new squad. I'm still optimistic. We're looking ahead. Schedule for the Silver and Black. They're going to have the weekend off. Then on Monday, they're taking on the Phoenix Suns, the defending Western Conference champs, Phoenix Suns. Tip off for the game, 7.30 here at home, Monday night. So get home, get some rest, recuperate. Yes. And Jakob's back, so big win there. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Max. All right, taking a look <laughs> at the website. Starting today, you can skate around Travis Park. The Rotary Ice Rink is going to be open today. The popular holiday pastime is back after hiatus because of COVID. Organizers expecting, get this, more than 50,000 skaters this season. We have all what you need to know right now. Just head to KSAT.com. It looks fun. Need to do that. And while you're on the homepage, you can check out the list of drive through holiday lights around oh. our area. The festive displays are a great way to stay warm and cozy inside the car with your friends and family. But if you want to move around, nearly all the drive through venues also have a place for people to walk, shop, and eat. We have a list of all these locations on our website at KSAT.com. Back to the ice rink. Mm -hmm. Self-serving, I'm going to promote it because uh, I'm going to be live there 5 and 6 this evening for the opening. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I we want it. Well, I was like, skate. yeah. At the same time, we'll see if I'm going to try to skate live. Uh, not a big skater, but we'll see, Mike. Just for your <gasps> entertainment. If you promise you'll watch, yes. I'll skate. Well, <laughs> you, <laughs> you shoot basketballs while yeah. doing. I don't know if it, if it correlates exactly. Well, we'll try it out. I think you can do Play it. Play basketball on skates. Oh, okay. <laughs> see, I was always a basketball guy, not a hockey guy, but yeah. we'll see. <laughs> basketball on skates. Don't do that. I'm now 626, 49 degrees out. And still ahead in our next half hour of GMSA, a dramatic rescue caught on camera. Two police officers save a man from a burning car. And taking a quick look at the roadway, see some flashing lights out there. We're going to check in with Stephen Cavazos in just a bit. Police hope that one sign will launch a flood of phone calls. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. They're trying to track down a 13-year-old girl who they say was abducted. I'll tell you more about it. The fallout from Meta, formerly known as Facebook, continues. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. How the social media giant is under investigation. Coming up. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City. Oh, there's a beautiful wow. shot of the moon. It is now covered by the clouds a little bit. All right, check in with Mike Osterhage in just a bit for your full forecast. Hi, guys. We made it to Friday. Happy Friday, and thank you for joining us. Happy Friday. It is November 19th, and we just saw that. It still was a cool picture with the clouds and the yes, way of the moon. Yes, even though it's kind of hiding back there. It yeah. still looks very cool, and I kind of feel a little bad, though, for the people who tried to take the picture last night. If you got up or stayed up late, got up very, very early, and it was like, uh, Now, some folks did get some really good shots yeah. of oh, yeah. the eclipse. going to show you that coming up here in a moment. And then also, I'm going to swing this camera, which here's a, a better view, and there's some of the clouds still hanging around here off to the west, but we have cleared out somewhat. And then for long weather, I'm going to swing this camera around. And just as the moon is going down, sun, it's a beautiful sunrise. Uh, obviously, it's not going to clear the horizon until just about uh, 7 o'clock, but we're already starting to see that orange glow off to the east. But very cool picture, beautiful view of the, the full moon out there. Temperature right now is at 49. Now, we had forecast to be down into the low 40s this morning, but those clouds were hanging around here for most of the night, so that acted like a blanket on top of us. 
The air is very dry. Dew points at 29. A little bit of a breeze out there. And all around the metropolitan area, everybody is right around uh, 50 or so. Upper 40s, 47 right now at Kelly 48 at Randolph and mold is on the moderate side. Juniper is low throughout the day. We are going to see well, mostly cloudy off to the west, clearing off to the east and chilly conditions out there. And it's really, really cold further up in northern portions of the hill country just because of uh, more clear skies that we've had overnight. Mostly sunny today. Just a really, really nice day. Upper 60s open up the windows going to be cold again tonight. Very cold start tomorrow down in the mid to lower 40s. And then the humidity comes back in fairly quickly. A front on Sunday may squeeze out a couple of showers. Then we'll kind of take these few days and cut and paste them into next week. Cool start on um, first of the week. Humidity returns. Temperatures get milder, but the difference is we've got a very good chance of rain on Thanksgiving and then right after that a low is going to be hanging around here. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos had a few uh, issues, not anything major so far, uh, right? Yeah, you know, Mike, Ooh. I hate to say it. Take a look right here. 35 of Von Army still pretty dark outside, but we do have a huge stretch of lights out there. Uh, that's because a crash has been detected in this area. You can see that traffic is building out there off 35 at Von Army. Again, uh, we do have first responders out there on the scene working to clear this crash scene up, but unfortunately, it's not the only problem we've spotted so far. I really want to bring your attention also here to US 90 at Leon Creek. Check this out. We have uh, first responders that look like they've blocked off a portion of the road here. Uh, it looks like a crash is causing some big issues, and this is not a good sign if you're going to be traveling into San Antonio from Castroville. Let's take you to the map and show you exactly what that's looking like. Right there in those eastbound lanes of Callahan Road, you're seeing that traffic continues to build with that stretch of wet red that is on Highway 90. Watch out for those first responders. If you're still at home and you need a travel to the downtown San Antonio area. Maybe wise to start looking for those alternative routes. Let's take you down here to that crash off of 35 northbound at Von Army Road, where that traffic again continues to build. As you just saw from that shot at Trans Guide, a wider look does show we are starting to get pretty busy out on the roadways. We have a number of stalls that we are keeping a very close eye on. If we are taking a look at these inbound times, it's expected 30 minutes right now coming in from Castroville on Highway 90 due to that crash. Not seeing any delays yet coming in from 35 uh, and Lytle, but we're going to continue to watch these issues throughout the morning. Just make sure that you are packing your patience. Max Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police are trying to track down a missing teen and they need your help. They have put out an appeal by way of trans guide an Amber alert that you may notice on your way into work. That's right. Katrina Weber joining us live downtown with more on the story. So Katrina, have they offered any details on what exactly happened to that teen? Well, the flyer that police put out calls this actually an abduction, and it says that the suspect in this case is a 17-year-old boy. Now, based on the trans guide signs that you'll see on your way into work, it looks like the pair is in a gold Chevy Impala. 13-year-old Bella Martinez was last seen around 1.30 yesterday afternoon on the south side in the 400 block of Hotwells Boulevard. She's about 5 feet 4 inches tall, weighs about 170 pounds, and was dressed in a black T-shirt, ripped black jeans with black Croc shoes. The Amber Alert says she was abducted by 17-year-old Ariel Moreno. He's five feet, six inches tall and weighs about 200 pounds. Now, as you'll notice, there is no license plate given for that uh, Chevy Impala, but that, co that car combination, the gold Chevy Impala, is not exactly a common car. So police want you to keep an eye out for that. And if you see it, or either of the people, Martinez or Moreno, you're asked to call SAPD at the number on your screen, 210-207-7660, 207-7660. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning, an argument ends with one man shot, and right now police investigating, working to figure out what exactly happened and who is responsible. This is what police know as of right now. A man arguing with someone in an alley near Rigsby Avenue and I-10 around midnight. That's when he was shot in the leg. Uh, that victim taken to Brooks Army Medical Center to be treated. He is expected to recover. The man, the victim, wouldn't tell officers much more than what actually happened. He wouldn't give the details of the name of the person who he was arguing with, the person who shot him. New this morning, we have learned the name of the person killed in a crash on the south side on Wednesday morning. According to the medical examiner's office, 21-year-old Angel Gonzalez was killed when an 18-wheeler pulled in front of his vehicle 
on Highway 16 between Loop 1604 and Smith Road. Gonzalez's car hit the back of the semi and he ended up trapped underneath it. He died at the scene. The crash is still under investigation. Another crazy story we've been talking about through the morning. Two Atlanta police officers being credited for rescuing a driver after a burning from a burning car after a crash into a tree. And the craziest part, the incident all caught on camera. The two officers running to the vehicle only to find the driver's side door handle had been torn off. They tried to pull the barely conscious driver through the window, but officers say his leg was pinned under the crushed steering wheel. Luckily, they found a way to work his leg free and pulled the driver to safety. Well, more potential fallout for Meta, the company formerly known as Facebook. Attorney generals across a number of states now probing whether the social media giant pushed the app Instagram onto teenagers. ABC's M. Wynn with what lawmakers are now looking into, plus reaction from the social network. Good morning. Now, just weeks after that explosive congressional hearing on social media's impact on teens, a new investigation is now being launched. This morning, new problems for the social media giant Meta, formerly known as Facebook. A bipartisan group of attorneys general from 11 states in the District of Columbia is investigating accusations that Meta promoted Instagram while knowing about the negative mental health impact the app can have on young people. The thing I saw at Facebook over and over again was there were conflicts of interest between what was good for the public and what was good for Facebook. Leaked internal research suggested teens suffered body image issues when using the app. 32 percent of teen girls saying when they feel bad about their bodies, Instagram makes them feel even worse. Privately, Facebook researchers and experts have been ringing the alarm for years. Instagram pushing back, saying, quote, these accusations are false and demonstrate a deep misunderstanding of the facts. Overnight, Connecticut Senator Richard Blumenthal, who led the congressional hearing on the subject, called on Facebook to release all of its internal research. M1 ABC News, Washington. Well, back here at home, we want to get an update to our progress for No Shave November. That's right. Stephen Cavazos joins us now with all the details. Good morning again. Yeah, I was just checking the website. <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, we just got a generous $1,000 donation wow. to our team. So oh now we're goodness. up 6,000, over 6,000. So Thank special you. shout out to Patricia. We appreciate the generosity from our viewers and it just keep those donations coming in because keep in mind all the funds that we are raising go back to cancer research, treatment and prevention. And things have obviously this morning been going very well. And we are actually hearing from many of the men on our KSAT team that are participating this year. Here why KSAT photojournalists extraordinaire Azian Bermia is participating. Cancer actually affected my family early in life. My grandma was diagnosed with breast cancer when I was in fifth grade. She's a survivor for almost 20 plus years and I actually wear this bracelet for the past 15 years straight uh, to remind myself how grateful I am that she's still here with us. I'm asking you to please donate, take, please just help us out, raise money, and together we can fight for those who uh, we don't want to lose with, or, or those that you know we've lost and can't fight anymore. Thank you. Awesome, Asian. And here's a look at how the guys are doing. This is our mid-month progress photo. I said this to, to Mark the other day that I feel like I look the same, but you know, all the guys are looking pretty <laughs> scruffy here. And keep in mind, it's all for a great cars. And I think we have our leaderboard up just right now. Keep in Yay! mind, oh, this is now. That I, they then they just updated that right now. Like, shout out to our producers who updated that very quickly because I just saw that. I was pretty surprised, but uh, this is all for a great cause, and I'm really happy that everybody's been raising the funds. So this is a collaborative effort, but of course we also like the bragging rights back here at the station. So if you need more information, just head over to kset.com slash no shave. There you will also find a link to donate to Team KSET as a whole, and we'll continue to share those updates right here on GMSA. And Max, I just saw your selfie there, so Looking I'm trying, good. but you know what? You deserve it the most. You have been oh. at the helm of this, yeah. guiding us through this True. process, and we really do appreciate it. And Mike deserves it, too. Uh, maybe not so much. Uh, oh, Mike is, <laughs> I'm so excited I, for you, though, Stephen. That, uh, that makes my day with the donation. So, you know, a shout-out again to Patricia, correct? You're right, yeah. Thank and, you. 6,000 plus now? Yeah, we're yeah. at 6,000 plus wow. and you know, just the call. Mike's putting out the call too. We continue to do it for everybody that wants to to donate and contribute. It is a great cause. It is. Awesome. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks. Steve.
And now to a heartwarming story about high school football. We're going to welcome home a soldier surprise on Saturday during the pregame announcements. A Lanier senior was reunited with his big brother who hadn't seen him in over a year. So Edward Gamis has been in Kansas at his first duty station and is preparing to deploy to Korea for a year tour on December 11th. But he couldn't take off without seeing his younger brother, Kevin, win his playoff game. Honestly, I started tearing up because... I didn't know if he was coming or not. Out of the four years I've been in high school, he, he, was, he never had a chance to come to the games. Since I'm the oldest, I make sure that you know, I'm always there for them no matter what. And both brothers said it was hard to put into words the emotions they were overcome with. We wish Kevin and the Lanier High School football team the best of luck in their upcoming game against McAllen Memorial. All right, speaking of football, the undefeated 15th ranked UTSA Roadrunners facing their biggest football game possibly in school history. They're going to try to make it to 11-0, taking on the University of Alabama at Birmingham. So UAB and UTSA set for 2.30 tomorrow at the Dome. Fill the Dome. Go in attendance. Make some noise. If the Roadrunners win, they're going to host the Conference USA Championship set for Friday, December 3rd. Meet me. Birds up. Good luck, Roadrunners. Time now is 642, 49 degrees out. Thanks, Max. And thousands of monarch butterflies head south to Mexico this time of year for the winter, and many of them lay eggs in San Antonio along the way. Ahead on GMSA, Sarah Costa shares her experience with raising monarchs and the transformation from caterpillar to butterfly. I had been waiting for this moment for several weeks. When I knew it was close to happening, I spent all day checking my Monarch butterfly enclosure and setting up my camera to make sure I didn't miss it. And that Nat Geo patience paid off. It felt like a mission accomplished. I had saved at least one of the many Monarch caterpillars turned chrysalis to its final stage. But let me take you to where this organic journey all started. When I was planting milkweed in my garden in September, before I could even plant it, a monarch flew inches from my face and began laying her eggs on the milkweed leaves over and over. I watched in awe and let her do her thing. But when she left, I felt responsible to see it through that her offspring lived, knowing that monarch butterflies are a backbone pollinator to our ecosystem and food cycle. And I'm not the only one who feels compelled to protect and raise monarchs. Isabella Naya is a fifth grade teacher at NISD's Kuntz Elementary. For 12 years, she's been protecting and raising monarchs in the school's pollinator garden that she started with her after school program, Eco Friends. We're starting to also see a decline in monarchs, and that has to do with the fact of there's climate change and the fact that, you know, humans have a huge impact on that as well. It's why I kept checking my milkweed and eventually found those eggs had grown into some very hungry caterpillars. I sought advice from experts at the Texas Butterfly Festival who told me it would be best to protect the caterpillars from predators with netting. I also cut up butternut squash for them to eat when they finished the milkweed. Then one by one, about 20 chrysalis formed. We had a storm one night and I found several of them fell, which could result in them not surviving. I researched how to safely rehang them with dental floss. I had never seen a chrysalis in person or had been able to watch that transformation from Jolly Rancher green with golden lines to transparent. It made me feel like a fifth grader with innocent excitement, much like Anaya students do. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Sarah. We are keeping track on the roadways. Traffic right now not looking great. 35 at Von Ormy. We do have a crash that's been detected here. We do have first responders out there on the scene, obviously causing some issues for the vehicles that are heading in the direction. But we really want to bring you uh, your attention right here to US 90 at Leon Creek. This is going to be a major problem this morning for our early morning commuters because the San Antonio Police Department just put out that the both directions from the east and westbound lanes are going to be blocked off for at least two to three hours, possibly. So find those alternative routes this morning because it is not looking good on Highway 90. You can see the eastbound lanes and the westbound lanes are building up in both directions. That crash detected right at Callahan Road. Katrina Weber heading out there to the scene to find out more information. But again, make sure that you're planning accordingly. We do have a crash detected here off I-35 Northbound, as you just saw at Von Ormy Road, where traffic continues to build. It looks like things are going downhill pretty quick. Mike, how's the weather going to be looking though? Oh, fantastic. Today we had some clouds overnight, so a lot of folks did not get to see the eclipse, but uh, this is a a beautiful view of the eclipse from uh, late last night and then sunrise this morning. The moon is just about setting and now sun's going to be coming up in about uh, I'll say 
15 minutes or so, and it's going to be a spectacular sunrise. We're at 49 right now. The cloud cover hung in here for most of the early morning hours, so that kept us from getting as cool as what we had originally uh, forecast. Now, as far as going into the weekend, we're going to have a cold morning tomorrow, clear skies overnight tonight. Humidity comes back in here late tomorrow into Sunday, maybe a couple of sprinkles or some mist or drizzle, fog early Sunday morning. And then the front's going to move through during the day Sunday, and that may touch off a couple of showers around here. It's not going to be a big deal as far as rain is concerned on Sunday. Now we're going to have kind of a roller coaster as far as temperatures, humidity, and this is a perfect example of it. Humidity comes in Sunday. Here's the front. Then humidity comes back up and that's going to lead to rain chances. So the better rain chances are going to be later on in the week. Here's the uh, long range computer model and going into the weekend again, we have the rain chances here on Sunday and then we'll clear out Monday. Very cold Tuesday morning, then the humidity starts to work its way back in here. Maybe a shower to Wednesday, but we've got a, a low which is going to be developing and it's one of those where it doesn't move very quickly. So that's going to keep rain chances around Thursday. It looks like Friday, perhaps even lingering on into Saturday of next week, Thanksgiving weekend for today. Beautiful day, a couple left of clouds here and there, and then by noon, 62 degrees, partly cloudy, mostly sunny skies, mostly sunny all day long, 67 for a high temperature, open up the windows, and then very cold again tomorrow morning, we'll be down in the mid 40s, 74 in the afternoon, so humidity comes back in here fairly quickly late in the day, very humid and warm on Sunday, front comes through, clears us out, and then we do it all over again leading into Thanksgiving, but looks like it's gonna be a wet Thanksgiving, and perhaps even lingering into Friday and Saturday then of next week with this low hanging around. But we need the rain, so we'll, yeah, we'll yeah, take I, the roller coaster. Because it's been a while since we've had some decent rain around here. Very true. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. 651, 48 degrees out. And coming up tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to show you how one woman is helping thousands of children with hearing loss thrive by using theater as therapy. And take a quick live look out at the Alamo City. The sun is out. The temps are down 48 degrees. We're going to have one last check in with Stephen and Mike right after the break. Good morning and welcome back. So it started off as a slow and quiet day on the roadways, but it has picked up a lot. Yes, it has. Stephen Cavazos has been very busy. Let's go ahead and check back with him. That's right, Max. Stephanie, we're taking a look at US 90 at Leon Creek. The situation out there has not been improving. In fact, we know that first responders could possibly be out there for up to two to three hours and the east and westbound lanes are going to be blocked off for quite some time. Taking you right to the map, east, the eastbound lanes and westbound lanes at 90 are just building in those areas. Fine alternative routes still seeing this buildup of traffic off I 35 northbound at Von Ormy due to another crash. Right now, these are the two big issues on the roadways that drivers need to be on the lookout for. We're going to be tracking it all and have more updates throughout the morning, Mike. Thank you very much. And uh, we had a lot of leftover clouds this morning. Things have cleared out and the sunrise. We're looking off to the east right now. It's going to be spectacular after the uh, full moon has set this morning. 48 degrees right now. And we got uh, 43 up the road in Balverde. 62 at noon, 67 for a high temperature today. And it's going to be just a gorgeous day today. Good start tomorrow. Humidity comes in here over the weekend. Another front Sunday, maybe a couple of showers. Cool start to next week, and then we're going to see the clouds, the humidity increase, temperatures get milder, and rain chances, as it looks right now, Thanksgiving as well as Friday and Saturday. All right, but the weekend looks pretty good for the most part. This weekend, yeah, especially yeah. the start of it. We'll take it. You guys have a great day. Thank you for joining us. See you back here, 9 a.m.